the thing with a catalog and why it can be so powerful is they've seen the product, they've seen the price point, they're warm when they land on the site, the conversion rate should be higher. So it's in your bag to kind of close that sale. You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this e-commerce marketing focus podcast. If you're not familiar with our format, well, each month we focus on a different marketing method like email or SEO or Facebook ads. And each week I interview a different expert to explore the latest advice on making it work for you. This month is all about offline marketing. Yes, the things away from the internet that you can do to drive your sales, be they retention or acquisition. We kicked off last time with a dive into acquisition sources like inserts, advertising and cold lists. And we're building on that cold mailing list piece today by diving into how you can use your other channels to make sure you drive every possible sale from your catalogue mailing. So a little bit of retention and a little bit of acquisition coming up. Our guest is going to be sharing a really, really great checklist that runs through marketing marketing channels, I suppose, as well as your website and other things to do just to make sure you give those people who've received your catalogue the best possible chance of converting. It's a brilliant checklist if you're already doing catalogues. It's a brilliant checklist if you're planning on doing any direct mail or catalogues or any offline activity, really. And it's also, I think it got me really thinking about some marketing methods and some marketing things we should be doing. And we don't send anything out by post. So, or do anything offline, really. So well worth a listen, even if you're not thinking of doing these things, because um, Anna's tips are going to spark some ideas, I promise you. Do make sure you listen right to the end of the episode so you catch her quick fire insider tips and my take on it all, plus my tips on some more free ways we can help you improve your offline marketing even more. So stay tuned to the end, everybody. Shopify recently turned the tables on me and took me from interviewer to interviewee, knowing, as they do, that the most successful retailers today are those that bridge the gap between online and offline and make it a seamless experience. Shopify wanted my thoughts on how to achieve truly connected commerce, particularly in the key areas of local selling, omnichannel selling and cross-border selling. You can read my thoughts along with other commerce experts from Germany, France, Spain and Italy by visiting keepopt.com forward slash Shopify and downloading the report. That's keepopt.com forward slash Shopify. In this episode, I'm chatting with offline marketing expert, Anna Wilson. Anna has over 21 years experience optimizing retention and acquisition strategies for growth for mail order retailers. Working both agency and client side, she has a wealth of experience to share, gathered whilst working for brands like Orvis, Bowdoin, The White Company, Abel & Cole, Glasses Direct, and many, many more. She's now a senior member of the team at Go Direct Marketing, where they manage hundreds of catalogue mailing campaigns a year. Hello, Anna. Hi, Chloe. Good to speak to you. It is lovely to get to catch up and talk. It's so lovely getting to talk about catalogues. Um, But before I go off on one about that, how did you end up in the lovely world of offline marketing? Well, when I started my career 21 years ago, it was um, the main channel for Orvis, the brand I worked for at the time. There I had the joys of going at press passing at 3 a.m. in the morning, deciding who we was going to mail, when we was going to mail, everything else that went with it. I loved it there. I actually, during my time there, digital was brand new. <laughs> so uh, it was actually how do we work the digital channels with the, the catalogue that we've, that we've got. And it kind of, it went from there carried it on throughout my career. We both started in basically the same role, but with different companies, only I didn't have to do press passes. So <laughs> <laughs> You missed the excitement of going all around the country and into Poland as well every few weeks. Yeah, totally missed out on those glamorous travel events. But Anna, we could, oh, I could talk to you about so many things, but I love the topic you suggested we should be sharing with the audience because it is absolutely spot on. And it's one I think people forget about. Even those who are sending catalogue mailings out all the time forget about this one because it's 
It's all those other things that happen around a catalogue to make sure you definitely get those conversions. So I thought we could start with how we actually make sure they find us after they've got the catalogue, which people may think is a bit of a weird one. To start. They've got the catalogue, surely they can find us. But it's not quite that simple sometimes, is it? So what should we be doing? Well, it's definitely not that simple, Chloe. So <laughs> most catalogues, well, all catalogues, if they don't, they've got a problem, um, have the website address on them. However... A lot of customers and prospects don't type that address into the address bar. They will start their journey on Google or other channels. What's worth doing is type in your brand name into Google. What you will find is the week you launch, you'll get more traffic. You'll get more people searching for your brand name. So make sure if you're brand bidding and you've got competitors in that space, make sure you're putting more money uh, behind it that week at least make sure you're you ranking every time. Also, don't just look at organic search, we'll look at the paid search, but also look at the paid shopping space. So at the top of Google, where you've got the different shopping links, try and get as much of that carousel as you can. You don't want to be spending 60p on every catalog to get someone to go to Google and go to a competitor of yours. The other thing to point out here as well, Chloe, is not everyone starts by bidding on the brand name. Some people will go through the catalogue, they will look at a product name. And even last night, I saw a dress in a catalogue called the Mel Dress. Seven brands appeared with a Mel Dress. Obviously, all different products, but it's just kind of a key to actually think people won't just be searching the brand. They'll also be searching the product names too. Got it. So both double check what our SEO looks like on the organic side, but more importantly, make sure we factored in when the catalogue lands into our Google ads, possibly Bing ads budgets as well to make sure we are appearing in the right place. Is it worth altering the text as much as we have control of to do these things on Google these days, but is it worth altering the text of those brand campaigns to make sure people tie the catalog with our ad? I would definitely talk about newness. More often than not, a catalog will feature the new season or the new collection. So I would definitely call that out. I wouldn't necessarily call out the catalogue, potentially as a as a site link, but um, not right at the top. It needs to feel to the customer that that is the brand they've received the catalogue from. Got you. So if we were releasing our new spring, summer season catalogue, we might make sure the ad had the words, see our new spring, summer collection in it. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So SEO and PPC covered. You said about searching on Google, other search engines or other places. So do we need to care about social media at this point as well? The thing for me on social media is making sure that one, if somebody goes to search for your brand on the likes of definitely Meta, Instagram and TikTok, that what appears, so your page looks the same or the same brand feel as the catalogue. So what I would recommend, so uh, for example, on Instagram and Meta at least, that actually near the top of the page or your posts the day the catalogue goes out or that week feature the product that's prominent on the catalogue. So for example, uh, if you've got a lovely shot on the front cover, post about that on Instagram as well. Post about it also across the board. That covers organic social. With paid social, I'd also do something similar. I would make sure that within my bank of social creative, I've got products that is the same as the catalogue, both for prospecting audiences, but also uh, retargeting and retention audiences as well. So yes, you can't control your kind of DPA product ads but you could definitely put about the new collection or other things on there would you create like custom audiences on facebook based on the people you were actually mailing the catalog to as a different segment or is that just a bit ott no i i would definitely test it so i've worked with brands where we've tested actually the impacts of catalog and a social ad versus just the catalog or versus just the social ad in that case. Typically, the two working together actually do bring the most profit. However, sometimes you can go overkill. So the thing with custom audiences on Meta is quite often because they're small audiences 
and the match rate is quite small as well, you end up with a really high frequency if you put quite a bit of budget behind that. So I'd be very careful that you're not pushing too much spend to those audiences, but definitely worth uh, testing. The other thing to point out on there is quite often with a catalog, you will have uh, different offers for different audiences. So it might be for your active customers, you don't have a a promo. It might be that for someone who hasn't shopped with you for two years, you have 10% off or something different there. You can carry that forward through onto your custom audiences. Also talking about custom audiences, you can also have the custom audiences on Google for when people are actually uh, searching on there. Again, match rate isn't always great, but it's just another, it's another way to get that message out. Excellent. Loving all this. Any other marketing channels we should make sure are on point to make as many of those people who've got the catalogue in their hand and they're going, I'm going to take action, actually find it to us? Definitely. So there's also email. So can't forget about that. So the week that you go out with a catalogue, and I keep saying week as opposed to day, because quite often now the most cost effective way to mail a catalogue is over a a mailing method that could land over the period of a few days or to a week. So you can't always pinpoint the day that someone's going to receive it. But during that time, I would send an email out, reference the catalogue. Also, because you can split out the people that you know you've mailed the catalogue to, to um, people that you know you haven't mailed the catalogue to, it might actually be an opportunity to get some of the people that aren't receiving your catalogue on the mailing list to receive the catalogue. And also on those emails, you can link to a digital copy of the catalogue. So on your website, you can have the catalog as a digital kind of lookbook if you want to, to kind of carry that theme on. And on an email as well, just make sure that actually you're pushing that product that's appearing in the catalog and the offers are the same. There's nothing worse than getting a 10% promo in the in the mail and then nothing on an email or even something completely different. It's not seamless also with email it's not just about when the catalog launches but also through the cycle of that catalog so if for example you've got a promo so if you're sending a 10 percent off that's valid for four weeks actually sending an email out before that four weeks is up as a last chance to get that promo those emails work quite well and bring in quite a lot of revenue across my clients other channels. Can I ask a quick question? I don't. I am asking permission. You're being that brilliant. I feel I have to ask permission to be allowed to ask a question. <laughs> I'm the host. Of course, I'm allowed to ask a question. So on email, you mentioned about doing it throughout the lifetime of the campaign, and also about using it to encourage signups. Would you, to the people who are going to get the catalogue, send them an email telling them to look out for it? So like, a uh, coming next week is your catalogue. Keep an eye on the mail and. Prior to that, would you send a art to those you you're not planning on mailing? You know, we'll be sending out our spring summer in four weeks' time. Do you want to be on the list? Type thing. Would you go that far as to push it? It depends on the brand and it depends on the the offering because what you don't want to do, you don't want to delay that purchase. So you don't want to say a week before a catalog's going out, hey guys, your new collection's coming out next week because do you know what? They'll wait. So if you're in, I don't know, end of season sale, it's very different to bringing out the new collection. So it might actually work then. But if you're in a period of kind of all full price and you you don't want someone almost having to make the choice between what's on the website today versus what's going to be on the website next week. So it's just playing it into that mix. I would do potentially as part of even a welcome program for on email, do you want to uh, receive our catalogues and do that as other things like seamlessly into your normal kind of marketing automation anyway. Got you. Okay. So yes to the encouraging people to opt into the, you know, to proactively opt into the catalogue, but maybe think about it with the letting them know it's coming in case you accidentally screw up this week's sales. Yes. (laughs) Because not everybody will come (laughs) back next week. You were going to go into other marketing channels. So what else... What else is on the list? So thinking about after the catalogs landed, not everybody who purchases from you purchases as a result of receiving that catalog. Even the people that do purchase from you because they got a catalog, once they receive an order, if they go on to buy, 
you should be putting a catalog into that order as well. And I know from a kind of sustainability perspective, we don't want to be giving them paper that they uh, they don't need because they may already have it on the coffee table. However, those people who have uh, received a order at the time of receiving that, they're at a very kind of warm point with you. And actually, if they've still got it on the coffee table, they could give it to a friend. It almost acts as that referral mechanism. For the people that have ordered from you and not received a catalogue, chances are they haven't seen half of what's in your catalogue on your website, probably even more. People don't tend to spend hours looking. They look at something they want to buy and, and buy that. So it can very much add to kind of improving repeat purchase rates quickly. I remember bounce backs being so powerful putting those catalogues in you're like what we're going to give a whole catalog to the person you just bought from the catalog and back then you knew they just bought from the catalog and it's like exactly no they are going to buy again really yeah it blew my mind 20 years ago that did still does a little bit today is there and, and i'm probably going back 20 years with this question anna should we also be doing anything with the customer service team in case people make contact before they're ready to buy be it via live chat email or dare we say at the phone It's very important that the customer service team know when something's going out and what it's going to look like. That sounds very obvious. I've known before a customer service team shout, what is this? What are they even talking about? And if they understand what's going out, making sure there's a catalog on every single person's desk that works for you, not just customer service, but everyone so they can uh, refer to it if they need to. But also, if you've got a different offer strategy for different customer segments, it's very important that they know that too. So, well, now people do tend to use the website more than they use the phone and the customer service team. There will still be questions around, especially from prospects, where did you get my name from? What did you, and, and the things that you've kind of got to tackle. So, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's very important, Chloe. Cool. Okay. So, let's assume we've got them as far as the website. What do we need to do on the website to maximize the chances of them actually converting so when someone lands on the website it's very important another one that seems obvious but um, doesn't always happen that the home page on the website has got the same look and feel as the catalog there's nothing worse than receiving a catalog browsing through it going to the website and actually one it looks like a different brand you question that you've landed on the uh, right website but two actually finding the product you're looking for so back in the day, Chloe, you'll know, you'll know the, remember the days where <laughs> most sites um, had things like quick buy or you would, you would put in the product code that was in the, in the catalog um, and shop that way. Yeah, but people, people <laughs> shop other ways now. So, um, so for example, if it is a top that that top features in the top category and it's relatively near the top of the page customers don't want to be going down to page three to actually find something the other thing as well is making sure that another obvious but making sure the product's in stock or if it's not in stock actually hopefully they can get it quickly or they know when they can pre-order it so it's actually on the website at least if your product sells out don't take it off the website especially during the life cycle of that catalog because it'll just cause confusion and more customer service calls if they call up and ask where it is. Also, if it's sold out, it can actually create more urgency for the next catalog. People will buy straight away when they're receiving it rather than waiting. The other thing on the website is you've got to remember that not everyone's landing on that homepage. So when I say make sure the homepage has got the same kind of look and feel, that goes kind of throughout the site. So throughout the category pages, your main lead images being um, some of the photo shoot for the catalogue, it's just all needs to be kind of as seamless as possible. It's kind of like if you've if you've got, oh, this is going to be a really weird example, but if you've got fashion products that you sell all year round, and your summer catalog comes out and you've got pictures of someone on a beach wearing it and then your winter catalog comes out and they're on the ski slope wearing it i told you this was going to get weird you want to make sure that those especially the best sellers have got the season appropriate picture on at the right time so so they're not looking in the catalog at 
the very tall lady on the beach wearing it. And then on the website, they've got the short blonde where <laughs> who sat, sat in a chair and they're trying to work out if it's the same item. You've got to get that consistency, haven't you? Yeah. And what you've got to remember is the thing with a catalogue and why it can be so powerful is they've seen the product, they've seen the price point. So what you've got to remember with, so for example, with a social visit, someone coming from a social ad, they may not have even seen the price. They may have got a glimpse of something they like the look of and they're coming in to kind of look at the overall brand. Whereas on the catalog, they're going to the website because they like what they see. They're not going to the website thinking, oh, well, that's all right, but what else have they got? They're warm when they land on the site. The conversion rate should be higher. So it's in your bag to kind of close that sale. Brilliant way to put it. Okay, Anna, anything we've missed that we should uh, let people know to add to this checklist of things to get ready before that catalogue lands? Probably loads of stuff. But the other one that we've missed that springs to mind is if you sell your product elsewhere, For example, quite a few of the brands that I work with also sell on uh, John Lewis or sell on marketplaces. Going back to the search and how people find you, it's just thinking about how that sits as well. Because, for example, if you're selling fashion and you sell in John Lewis, John Lewis should see an increase in their traffic to your collection, especially if you haven't got your own retail stores because they're going to want to try the stuff on. And the reason I'm saying think about this is because when John Lewis are telling you the next week, you performed amazing last week and you start sending them more products because you think they're doing amazing and they should do more. (laughs) Leave me (laughs) up in there. (laughs) So then actually uh, you remember that actually catalog could be a driver of that. Not everyone's going to come direct to your website. And on the subject of physical stores if you've got your own stores the shop window should have the same look and feel as the catalogue the store staff should all have a copy goes back to me saying customer service and everyone should have a copy so you should get extra copies delivered for the store for them to hand out to people that want them because again although they've walked around the store and seen all the products they don't see all the products they don't take it all in and actually once they've tried that what they've bought on or they may not have even bought in store at the time if they've got something to look through at their own leisure um, you will likely see an increase in the sales and for anyone thinking okay we'll just add all our store staff to our mailing list no 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 no. they need it before the customers get it you will get angry store staff if the customers have the catalogue before they've got it because they will feel like they can't do their job properly because they can't do their job properly because you haven't sent them a catalogue So yeah, it's an easy way out, but it's not a very good way out to just chuck them into your mailing list. Okay, Anna, thank you. It's been brilliant picking your brains about all that and kind of exploring my own past as we do it. (laughs) Listeners, make sure you stay tuned right to the end of the episode because Anna's going to be sharing her insider tips very shortly and they are going to be top. I just know they are. And I'll also be sharing my suggestions for more free resources to help you improve things even further in your business. Shopify recently turned the tables on me and took me from interviewer to interviewee, knowing, as they do, that the most successful retailers today are those that bridge the gap between online and offline and make it a seamless experience. Shopify wanted my thoughts on how to achieve truly connected commerce, particularly in the key areas of local selling, omnichannel selling and cross-border selling. You can read my thoughts along with other commerce experts from Germany, France, Spain and Italy by visiting keepopt.com forward slash Shopify and downloading the report. That's keepopt.com forward slash Shopify. Okay, Anna, so far we've gone deep into how does catalogues fit with my other marketing channels. Now you get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole of offline marketing. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with offline marketing, which of course does include everything we've already been talking about. Anna, are you ready for these? Sure am. Okay, let's start with newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? I'm going to stay on direct mail and stay uh, kind of talking about catalogues, really. You may have mailed catalogues before, or you may be thinking about launching. First of all, I would say make sure that DM is right for your business. 
it isn't always if you've got low average order values um, and you've got low margins then actually it potentially isn't isn't right for you but then also thinking about if it is right for you who are you going to send it to so is it going to be just existing customers which actually a lot of people forget about the existing customers when they're thinking of doing catalog for the first time. So um, the amount of conversations I've had where people have decided that they're going to mail 50,000 new customers, for example, and they forgot about the 100,000 existing customers they're sat on that they think don't need it because they already know the brand. They absolutely need it and they will drive more profit by actually um, sending them the catalog. Just understanding the measures of success, managing your expectations, and don't feel as if you have to do it all by yourself. So there's lots of things that go into it. Deciding whether to do it or not is the easy part. Executing it is uh, much harder than other channels. Um, So one, you've got to decide on your format, you've got to design it, you've got to choose the paper, decide where to print it, who to send it to, analyze it, clean the data, so many things that go into it. So there's experts out there that can help with that. So for example, um, plug, but Go Direct Marketing can help manage all of that apart from designing the catalog for you. I always think one of the cool things about doing catalogs, and this was true 20 years ago, was that companies have been doing this for a hundred years. The humans haven't changed very much and the science of how to get a good response is so much more advanced than with Facebook ads or Google ads or any of that online stuff we get up to. So tapping into experts to get give yourselves the best chance of success is such a good idea. We ranted about it in the last episode. And um, I'm going to resist ranting about it in this one, but but Anna's spot on. Find some experts to help you. It will pay off so much. Okay, next Insider Tips question. Once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimising. So what's your favourite way to improve performance? This is an answer you've heard before, Chloe, but um, <laughs> and you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, but um, testing and learning is uh, very important. One thing I'd say here is I have actually spoke to many brands before who uh, they may say, oh, well, we've tested offer. In January, we sent a 10% off and in February, we sent a 20% off and the January one worked better. So we just rolled out and did that going forward. The thing for me here is making sure that your test is valid. For example, if it is an offer test, it needs to be at the same time and like for like customer groups in each. The sizes of the tests need to be statistically valid. You can't roll out on a learning that one customer ordered in one version and three ordered in the other. There's definite kind of science to it as well. So understanding the incrementality of a lot of the testing you're doing and rolling it out effectively. Given this podcast is called the Keep Optimising Podcast, we don't talk about statistical (laughs) significance anywhere near enough. (laughs) It's weirdly absent from digital marketing practice. Yeah, Wrongly absent. Anyway, go Google it, people. I'm not going deep into it now. Um, If someone listening wants to learn more, speaking of which, is there one cheap or free resource you would recommend, Anna? There isn't one. There's several that have glimpses of things to look at. So uh, Market Reach um, have some good papers on there, good insights. This podcast, actually. So you've done a few offline marketing months before, and there's been some great guests in the past. Also, what I would say here is just signing up for other retailers' mailings. So similar to what you would do with email, sign up to receive other catalogs. It doesn't mean to say they're all best practice, but you'll soon probably get the gist of what is based on what you're seeing the most of and the types of things that you're you're seeing a lot of people because it's an expensive channel do do quite a bit of testing in it. Oh, I love those. Thank And thank you so much for the mention of the podcast. Much appreciated. Keepopt.com forward slash offline if you want to go and find all our offline marketing episodes from over the years. And uh, you mentioned Market Reach. That's a little subset of Royal Mail. So if you Google Market Reach Royal Mail, they're like a mini agency with the Royal Mail who produce research and help you get mailings happening. So that's that one, which obviously if you're not mailing in the UK, they're not going to be able to help you with that. But a lot of their research is really fascinating. So still worth a look wherever you are in the world. Finally, Anna, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for? Well, 
we're sat here and Rawmel, you may know this, but they've just increased their prices again, making it um, harder for us to um, do direct mail cost effectively. They've gone up for some people around about 10%. So they went up last October and they've just gone up again. As a result of this, you're going to see different, uh, you probably have already, but seen different formats land on your doormats. There are still cost effective ways to mail. There's ways to get your prices of your catalogs down. So um, it's about testing. Again, going back to the test thing, don't just do it because it's the cheapest. Actually look at what works best for your brand, test kind of your control versus the cheaper methods of mailing um, and see what kind of works best. The other thing is, although direct mail has been around for a long, long time, there's still new players coming into the market. So I've spoken to five brands alone in the last couple of months that are doing it for the first time this autumn. There's also many more. So just keep on your toes there and kind of, it's not going away. It's here to stay. And actually the changes in the digital space are making it hard to cut through there. So direct mail is um, kind of an effective way to get in front of the customer. And the other thing which links to the other points is programmatic DM. So I know you've had guests on in the past, Chloe, that have spoke about that. And it's it's not a new thing, but it's still new to quite a few people. So, well, it's going to become more important, I think, in the next six to 12 months. It is so exciting how you can bring DM pieces, you know, postcards and smaller, cheaper things, as well as parcel inserts into your CR, you know, your email CRM contact strategy by triggering things. It's like so cool. Anyway, um, so, so cool. Anna, thank you so much for all of this. We're very nearly at the end of the show though. So please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business. Okay, so you can find me on LinkedIn, Anna Wilson. There are a few Anna Wilsons on LinkedIn. It's quite a common name. I'm uh, controversial, but I've actually got a wing walking picture as my profile picture on there. So that, that's worth it for a common name. And then Go Direct Marketing is the agency that I'm part of. And that's godirectmarketing.co.uk. So everybody, godirectmarketing.co.uk or search for Anna Wilson on LinkedIn and click on the one with the wing walking picture obviously. (laughs) Um, Anna, it's been lovely hanging out with you. Thank you so much for bringing such clear insight into this episode. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chloe. So what great advice. And I think if you are someone who is already running a catalogue or you're thinking of running a catalogue, that's a brilliant checklist to make sure you're ticking every box to make sure that you are getting the best possible impact from that marketing activity. And then even if you're not and you're not planning on running catalogues, that's like a, oh, we haven't done that in this and this. You know, I was listening to it as a podcast promoter going, oh, we could, oh, we we totally didn't think of that. And how do we align all these different bits and pieces up? So I think lots of hopefully provoke loads of ideas for all of you out there to help you improve those response rates. You can get the links to all those things we discussed, the full transcript of the episode, important notes and more at keepoptimizing.com or use our special direct episode short links. Just put keepopt.com forward slash the number of this episode into the URL bar and you'll be redirected straight to the correct episode page. When you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I share to help you improve your business. Like last week's episode, which was all about finding the cold data to mail in the first place, amongst some other offline customer acquisition advertising channels. Brilliant discussion, uh, loads of great ideas and insight and a lot of tips in that that will save you a huge amount of time, money and confusion if you're going down that route. Also, in this particular month, we are going to be having an episode specifically about tracking the impact of your offline activity, which we didn't really get into with Anna because it's it's more than an episode, quite frankly. But we will have an episode coming up precisely about that and some others around it all. And as Anna said, we do have past episodes about programmatic and you can find all of that stuff either by scrolling up your feed and looking for things that start with the word offline Or if you go to keepopt.com forward slash offline, you will go to the page on the website where we collate it all for you. 
If you know someone else who is also looking at finding better ways, more ROI positive ways to grow their e-commerce sales, and they might be interested in doing some of this direct mail catalog stuff, then please do tell them as well, because we produce the show to help all of you improve the performance of your e-commerce marketing. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything, keep optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z. Don't forget to download Shopify's new industry report featuring my thoughts on how to achieve truly connected commerce, along with other commerce experts from Germany, France, Spain, and Italy by visiting keepopt.com forward slash Shopify.